Attention please. This uploading is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles. G Patrol. Follow us. Sail and mast, run deep through Brixham's fishing past, when men battle sea and wind to net their fortunes fast. Now these glory days and ancient yachts have foundered and have gone, faded shanties and grandfather's memories are all that linger on. But the sons of the waves still trawl the deepest, darkest ocean. Those bearers of Fishtown's glorious past toil on for Brixham's children. One hundred years ago, the bay waters off Brixham would have been alive with sailing trawlers. Now every May, the glory days are relived with a heritage festival and vintage ships race, a celebration of Brixham's proud fishing history. Brixham sailing trawlers are probably one of the best known sailing trawlers that ever sailed the oceans. They're like the Rolls Royces of um, fishing boats. There's a bigger community with the traditional sailing boats because obviously they're kind of like a dying breed. Not everybody has a boat like this, so there's definitely a bit more passion involved. They look lovely, yes, but uh, must be an awful lot of money wasted because, I mean, they're tied up best part of the year. And nine times out of ten, when they take them out, something goes wrong with them and it costs them a bloody fortune to repair them when they come back in. Every year during Heritage Week, the community of Brixham remember their fishermen past and present. It's uh, wonderful to see a goodly gathering of people for this annual blessing of the fleet, which has uh, become very much part of Brixham life. This evening, as we gather under this old fish market, allow us in this time of worship to reflect on the rich heritage we have here in Brixham. A heritage in fishing that stretches back over many generations. A fishing port since the 16th century, evidence of Brixham's seafaring history and traditions is everywhere. Twenty-two-year-old Jess Knights is studying to become a yachtswoman while she works behind the bar of a quayside pub. I've worked at the Sprat and Mackerel for nearly two years. We get lots of fishermen, obviously, because it's the first pub off the quay, so when they leave the boat, they all come in here. We don't get skippers. Skippers drink in the Crown and the crews drink in the Sprat. It's always been like that, apparently, so... It's like fisherman politics. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Jess's father is a local fisherman. My life's at sea. I couldn't think of doing anything else. To be without a boat would be like losing a limb. You want Jess? She said you could do that. Yeah, yeah, it's not a problem. I don't think you'll get the sack. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that the different pubs allow each other scribble on their walls. <laughs> you know, stuff like this is, is from their point of view, is, is quite nice. Normally I do these when I'm sort of maybe had a couple of pints, so they're a bit more freer, a bit looser, and, you know, 
There you go, that's a, a quickie. Throughout the 19th century, sailing trawlers used to gather in Brixham to race during the summer. The World Wars put a stop to these regattas, and it was Tony Knights who restarted this tradition 14 years ago. When we first started up the race again, the idea was to bring back Brixham's heritage, if you like. Nobody else we wanted to do it because they didn't really know at the time the historic importance of those boats you know, to this town. Having restarted this Brixham tradition, 12 years ago, Tony bought his own vintage boat. Iris um, is a Cornish lugger. Uh, she was built as a fishing boat in 1921. The family acquired it probably 12 years ago, and it's been a sort of uh, major struggle um, to try and get the thing rebuilt. The entire structure of the boat was pretty much um, another few years and it would have just fallen apart. Echoing faintly, ancient memory, calling through time, distant and faintly. The colors may fade, the pages all torn, but the sunset of ages brings a glowing new dawn. Brixham's fishing heritage is still taught to local school children by the town's fishermen. John Lovell has fished out of Brixham for almost 40 years. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Righto. That's good, we can start now. Do you remember last time we did some crabbing? Yeah. Well, we're going to do that again, if you like. Would you like that? Yeah. Right. OK, well, we need some volunteers. One, two, three, four. Can you go up there, please? There you go. All grab hold of a bit each. Ready? One, two, three. Here we go. <laughs> right, go, go, go. Whoa, just about there. Mine toes. What's alive? They're alive. So do we know what this one is? That's a spider goat. He's a bit sleepy, isn't he? He's tired. He said, because he had to come up the road, you see, today to get in here. Who wants to pick up a crab? Go on then, see Mark. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a fishing port, so most of us have grown up with it. I first went to sea with John when I was 13 for a week on his first boat he had, so. Put your hand like that. They are. We've all grown up around it, so they're, they're all involved in some kind of way or know somebody. Where we all live, you know, you're never more than sort of half a mile, three miles. You know, at the absolute most when you get out of Brixham, you, you're three miles away from the sea. Uh, oh, no. Uh, oh. Uh, Everything we see growing up around us is, is this, you know, nets and fishing and stuff like that. Boats. All we ever see is boats and water. That's a, that's a <laughs> monkey. Whoa, 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 whoa. They are. So, the net comes down on the seabed, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to catch fish today and we're going to fill this trawl right up with fish, OK? So when we come down, we put the fish in that box, all right? Start pulling, please. In they go. Look, we're catching fish. This is what we call trawling. Right, oh, start. You've caught all that today. What about that, then? You're all fishermen. In Brixham's harbour float the restored vintage fishing boats Vigilance and Provident. But up on the hill, there's another, even more famous vintage vessel. Years ago, you know, if you didn't look after your premises on the outside, you could get kicked out. I give it a coat every year. That's how it surprised me when you get something that's gone rotten on it. Because I always thought if you looked after it, it wouldn't go rotten. But it bloody does. Well, 
like, like a bit of a flagship, isn't it? You know, now it's, uh, it's been here for so long, people expect to see it. If there's many people came in for a drink and take pictures of it, I'd be wealthy. If it's clear, we lift this side up and over the side. All right. Tony Knight and his son Peter have been fishing around the clock to help earn the money to restore their 90-year-old vintage sailing boat, Iris. It's going to be very, very tight whether we get the thing finished or not, but at least Jess and her mate is going to be messing around on the boat doing any, any painting jobs and little bits that she can do. Yeah. So, um... We'll give her another job list. I'll keep her busy. Dad's gone back to sea, so I'm basically left in charge of Iris. Painting, sanding, just making her, getting her ready. I lived with my mum for 20 years, and my mum hated Brixham. I was never allowed out for trawler race. I was never involved in Brixham. And then I started working. Suddenly, it's like, you know everyone, everyone knows you. It can be very small sometimes. There is a general sense of everybody knows your business. That's why I enjoy sailing, because it's just, it's escapism, I suppose. You just get to, it's just you, the horizon, the water, and that's about it, really. It's like, it's just simple. Anchors away, the high seas await. Beyond the horizon lies uncertain fate. For that is the story of seafarers' lives, drowning in farewells and tearful goodbyes. Fishermen dream of well-remembered shores, back in the arms of their family once more.